Hi, my name is Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. In this video, I want to look at the new Photolab 8 by DxO Labs. I'm going to give you a number of reasons why I use it. And that's pretty much the purpose of this video. But before we dive into any of my spiel, I'm going to show you one very, very good reason why you should consider trying this piece of software. So on the screen at the moment is a raw file that I took in Iceland uh, quite a few years ago. And this is a 100% view using the loop tool of what that raw file looks like. When I show the uh, after view, you can see how clean and sharp this raw file is. This is one example of why I'm going to show you why DxO Photolabs 8 is my raw editor of choice. Before we dive into that, it is worth mentioning I am actually a global ambassador for DxO Labs. Uh, I do get paid by them, I am sponsored by them, but they don't see the videos before I publish them. And secondly, they don't tell me what to say. Uh, they are paying me for my honest opinion as a professional, and I can assure you my reputation is worth an awful lot more to me than a sponsorship. For a second point, there are many, many videos already on YouTube showing the features of all of these different photo editors and pixel peeping and geeking out on it. I'm not that type of photographer. This is my video talking about the reasons why I use this piece of software. So let's kick straight into it. Point number one. Uh, quality is the most important thing to me. As a professional photographer, I have many different ways of outputting images from books and ebooks and videos, of course, through to really, really big prints. I've printed up to four meters, uh, which is what, 12, 13 feet. So when I'm putting, uh, outputting really, really large images, I want to make sure the quality is exceptional. I use the Fuji GFX 100 Mark II, I use the Fuji Glass, and I want to make sure that when I'm processing my RAW files, quality counts. The two things that I believe DxO do far better than anybody else are lens profiles, which means things like sharpness and chromatic aberration and distortion, and secondly, noise reduction. So let's dive into those first. I'll show you some examples and then you can start making up your mind for yourself. Before we dive into that, it's worth mentioning that DxO Photo Lab 8 doesn't use a catalog like Lightroom or Capture One. It really just uses a file browser. So you navigate to the folder that you want to look into and open it up and that will show you the files there. I do use projects and I create these projects. So here I've made a little project for the review here and I've put a few images in there to discuss with you today. But I'm not corrupting my Lightroom catalog by looking at images or making adjustments to them. This uncorrected view here is the raw file. So this is exactly as it came out of camera. One of the things I do like to do on import is actually change it to this DxO natural profile. This is a bit like a flat profile, a linear profile in Lightroom. It's a nice clean version of it, but it is also brightening it up a little bit and sort of making some smart adjustments. It just saves me having to look at or not having to look at lots of underexposed files. The couple of things I want to look at first here are the lens corrections. So I'm going to look at distortion. And you can see that there is distortion there and DxO has fixed that. This was DxO's core business was lens profiling. So they have this incredible database which is being updated all the time with new bodies and new lenses. And so I've got the, all the lens profiles loaded in here. So it's sorting out distortion really, really well. The second thing is chromatic aberration. Now in this particular image, there isn't any. Um, it's not a typical night photography problem, but of course it exists. The other things I want to look at are the two things that I think they do really, really well, which are lens corrections and their noise reduction. All images suffer from some degree of softness. There's very few perfect lenses out there, even the four, five thousand, six hundred thousand dollar lenses. So I'm going to make this adjustment and I'm going to use the loop tool. And I haven't applied noise reduction yet. And you can see, I don't know if you can see in the video, but I can see noise 
in this. It was a night shot, of course, but the, it is tack sharp. It's absolutely tack sharp. And that for a night shot for me is massively important. If I click on their Deep Prime XD, XD2S, which is the new version of their noise reduction upgraded for Photolab 8, this is now utterly perfect. It's clean, it's sharp, it's perfect. Perfect is where I want to be. I'm able to use raw files that I took five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago with older bodies and older lenses and make them perfect. So let's continue on with this image because I want to uh, make a few adjustments and it can just show some of the other things I use a lot. So I'm going to crop this down to a 16 by 9. The second thing I want to demonstrate here is their clone tool. Uh, up until a few years ago, lens flare was a really horrible thing to get rid of. I used to use a technique called frequency separation in Photoshop, which was ever so complicated and never particularly great. And here I'm just going to make a quick clone using their just the erase tool. And I've now got a uh, an area where there was lens flare. In fact, if I just use the compare button, we can see that's where the lens flare was and it is gone. So <laughs> that was simple and super, super quick. So I've now got an image that looks really clean, uh, really sharp with no noise. That is a win as far as I'm concerned. So if I look at the before and after with this image already, I think it's already looking amazing and I haven't actually made any adjustments yet. The next thing I want to discuss is the curves tool, which again has been upgraded in DxO Photo Lab 8. Normal, we have an RGB curve, we have an R, G and B curve, but they have added what is known as a Luma curve. For those of you who are aware of the lab color space, the LAB color space, the Luma curve is a way to adjust contrast without affecting color. RGB curves do affect color. They, they can shift colors. You can create hue shifts and obviously saturation shifts. If you use a Luma curve, you have a way to, well, let's just get rid of that. You can see you can just pull them off there. I can also click on the image and just say, okay, I want to darken that area slightly. I'm going to grab these whiter areas and pull them up. Every time you click and drag, you create a point on the curve. And then you can obviously adjust them to your heart's content. And what's happening here is that the, the hues aren't shifting, whereas if I used an RGB curve, they would be shifting. It's always common with things like Aurora shots for the Auroras to look unnatural and kind of uh, a little bit over the top. And what I'm going to do here is demonstrate another one of the new features, which is a hue mask. So if I click on here, I can click the Aurora and that's going to create a mask where all of that green light is affecting the scene. Now I can expand that to increase its range. So once I have my Luma mask, I can make any adjustments I want. I can say, okay, well, I'm going to brighten or darken those. I'm going to pull down the highlights a little bit. But of course, one of the key things we want to look at here is the amount of saturation. Now, it's not unusual for me to pull down the saturation of auroras uh, to make them look a little bit more natural. Let's look at that in another image. So here's another shot again from Iceland and I really love the way this image is starting to look but I am going to come in with the Luma curve and I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast. I just want to create a little bit of mood and a little bit of feel. So I'm going to create a little bit of contrast there and it's instantly created some beautiful 3D feel to it but it's not shifting the colors. And this is what I really, really love about it is that we're creating these images that feel real. It's a really important thing when we're processing landscape shots for them to be believable. And that is my default. Of course, there's no noise in this one, but I am checking this lens softness correct uh, compensation box by default. I want the lens to be as sharp as possible. And if I zoom in again, at the back and at the front, the whole thing is just beautiful and crisp and sharp. 
So I'm super happy with that. So let's just summarize those points again. Point number one, quality is important. The noise reduction and the lens corrections is second to none. Secondly, there's no catalog that's gonna get confusing with other software that you use. I sometimes use DxO as a plugin with Lightroom and just do the things in Lightroom, but using DxO in the background. Uh, but more and more these days, I'm just using DxO Photo Lab 8. I've recently bought a new Mac computer and in fact this is the first time I've not installed Lightroom on a new computer that I bought. I exclusively have DxO and it fits in beautifully with my Photoshop workflow and the Nick workflow and some of the other things that I do. The new compare tool in Loop has all sorts of different flexibility and you just have to search for those features on the DxO website. Tons and tons of ways of comparing images and copying and pasting settings from one image to another and making sure that you're getting the image or you're processing the image that you want. Fourth, the Luma tool and the Curves tool. They are incredible ways of adjusting contrast and are much improved now in Photolab 8. And finally, point number five, it comes back to quality. <laughs> I know point one and point five are the same, but quality to me is everything. I hope you've enjoyed this short review of Photolab 8 by DxO Labs. Uh, there is, of course, a free trial, which you can uh, download at the link below. And I do have a 15% discount for those of you who want to purchase it. This is valid until the end of October or the first 100 people use it. Uh, that's it. So the first 100 people get 15% off and then the code doesn't work anymore. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday uh, when I'm going to be out in the field again here on the Isle of Lewis with this guy, which is the new 500mm f5.6 lens that I just got from Fujifilm. Uh, I bought it. I didn't get it for free. Uh, so I will be giving my completely impartial feelings about it. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate your support and for watching all these videos. Uh, thank you very much. I look forward to hearing any of your comments. Bye for now.